The objective is to catch as many fish species as we possibly can. Anything ranging from bluegill all the way to striped bass and everything in between, including smallmouth, largemouth, pike, musky, perch. Anything that swims in the great state of Maine is gonna end up in this boat or hopefully on the bank. I had this idea because I was watching a video the other day on YouTube. A buddy of mine, or I guess buddies of mine, Carl and Alex, attempted this challenge in a completely different country. Across the pond in England, they did their very own 24 hour challenge. If you guys wanna check out their video, I'll leave a link down below. Also, this video idea was inspired largely on the 39 hours that was filmed by Aaron Weeb on Cut Angling. We have to wake up in about five hours to film this video for you guys. We're pretty stoked, we're pretty psyched. I'm a little nervous because there's gonna be basically no sleep throughout this entire challenge. I've never in my entire life attempted to catch like over 10 types of fish species, freshwater fish species that is, in a whole day. So I'm very excited. Oh, Caleb's actually asleep, sorry, I'll be quiet. But anyway, I should probably wrap up this intro because we need to hit the hay. We start at sunrise, which by the way, in the great Northeast is 4 a.m. It's 4.13, we've woken up bright and breezy. The birds are just now alarming us that it is time to fish. And without further ado, let's get this timer underway. 24 hour multi-species challenge starts now. All right, we gotta start moving. Technically we should be fishing right now, but the sunrise is so freaking early up here in Maine. It's like hard to, it's hard to get to the water's edge right at sunrise. I've got a starting point, uh, a place to go when it's like 1 p.m., 2 p.m., 3 p.m. Each fish species bites at different windows, generally speaking. So with it being super early right now and a bit chilly, I think we're gonna go after the hardest, and that is probably a uh, salmon or a brook trout, which for most manners is not that hard, but for me, I struggle. When I grow up, I think I'm gonna become a meteorologist. It's a really easy job. All you have to do is get the forecast wrong and you know, you're hired. Came up this way because it was supposed to be five to 10 or light and variable. For whatever reason, I'm seeing the trees move, but nonetheless, good news, it's five 5 a.m. first spot. This is an inflow to a much bigger body of water. There's current, it's cool right now, it's overcast. There should be trout in here. If not, we can tick off at least a smallmouth, maybe a bluegill. There we go. Okay, wow, maybe we'll catch a fish today. Oh, no, no we won't, because I'm tangled for the reason. There we go. All right, in action. There we go. Ooh, that might be our first fish today. A little smallmouth. It's not what we drove all the way up here for, but if we can take it off early, then we will. There we go. <laughs> nice little smallie. There we have it. We've ticked off the smallmouth. Not a behemoth by any means, but this is a fish that we need. These little guys are all over Maine. They're considered invasive, but a lot of Mainers have taken a liking to them because they pull so hard and you can catch them just about any way. You can throw shell for them with poppers or you can go deep with drop shots. This guy's got some lice on him or something. I'm gonna get him back down there. Not the intended target for this first spot, but that's one down. Small and fast, big check mark. All right, well, we should probably fish this for a couple of minutes and then get out of here. The trout weren't really as aggressive as I thought they'd be, you know, and if it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen right now. The later it gets, the less likely that they're gonna be this shell. Hate that we drove like an hour all the way here. It sucks. Well, that small moth cost us a little over an hour and 30 minutes. No trout, no salmon. I kind of figured it'd go like that. Luckily, there is a river in between here and the next spot that I want to try that could yield a little tiny brook trout. So we're gonna head there right now. We're gonna have to basically strip down all this, put some wading boots on, and fish it for like 10 minutes. If it's good, it's good. Oh, I'm on, I have a fish, no way, no way, what is this? I was letting my fly drag behind the, oh, what is this? Fall fish? Let's go, new species. Not the intended target, but this is a fish that you can actually catch on lures up here in Maine. They make for really good pike bait, but it was actually on my list of fish to catch today. I just didn't anticipate doing it here, but now we don't have to worry about him. Oh, and there he goes. They actually get pretty big. I, I believe you can catch them in some areas like Moosehead Lake up to like four or five pounds, but that was just a micro example. As long as we're getting like a bite or knocking off a species per stop, I suppose that's the one. I got to think half glass full. We're going to head back up to the boat, hit spot number three. It is 7.30 a.m. We've already hit two spots. We've got two species. 
let's head over to spot number three and see if we can actually start, you know, racking up some numbers because this is, this is tough. Spot number three, let's get it. All right, let's get some redemption on these main fish. This is a cool spot that we're fishing right now. This is spot number three. It's technically two lakes combined into one. You've got a warm water side, which we launched on. And what that basically means, you got warm water species like largemouth, smallmouth, perch, chain pickerel, things of that nature. On the other side is the cold water side, meaning you've got trout, you've got salmon, you've got togue, pretty cool. So we're gonna literally just hop from the dock onto the boat and start casting because this whole side is all grass. Let's see if we can catch some fish. We need to redeem ourselves. I should let this sit while I work a jerk bait. Honestly, oh, killed two birds, one stone here. Still need that large mouth. Oh, geez. oh, there we go. I'm on. There we go. Fish on. <laughs> Let's go, baby. What do we have? What do we have? Oh, it's a bluegill. Nice. I think this is a red breast sunfish. I thought this was gonna be uh, one of the more challenging ones to get because, I mean, they are everywhere in Maine, but every time I try to actually target a bluegill, it doesn't work. I believe this is a red breast sunfish. They're really pretty. Let's go, baby. Species number three. Most of what we caught is little, but trust me, we will chase after some bigger fish, I swear. We just gotta get these little guys out of the way first, I suppose. Say that, bud. Beautiful fish, man. Wow. For my three species in total, I could probably make a 20 inch fish. There we go. What is this? Oh my God, good large mouth. Good large mouth, good large mouth. Good large mouth on the zinger. Come on, buddy, come on, buddy. Let's go, baby! <laughs> Two species, done. Done and dusted, and it's a good one, too. Through the zinger, along some vegemication down there. We've got ourselves a nice beastie little large mouth. He crushed it, too. Well, we got the two obvious ones out of the way. Seeing as I'm a bass angler, I thought we would, uh, we'd get a large mouth in the small fairly quickly. Not a bad one. Species number four. Oh, let's go. It is 820. We've caught four different fish species, two of which being kind of eclectic, and then two, of course, being species of bass. This is good. I think if we can get a perch, a chain pickerel in this side, in the next 20 minutes, I'm going to try to make an attempt to catch some sort of trout species on the clear side. And then from there, we're going to go to spot number four. We are covering a lot of ground this morning. Let's keep going, though. Oh. Oh, 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 what is it? What, what, what do we have? What do we have? Perch, let's go. We got a perch. No way, dude. On the jerk bait. Back to back. Literally, I just released my largemouth. Check it out. Species number five, the yellow perch. They're such cool fish. Little fun fact about yellow perch is uh, one defense mechanism they use to avoid predators is their, uh, their gill plates are very, very sharp. So when you hold a perch and kind of grip them hard, they'll actually flare their gills out to make it more difficult for fish to swallow them. They're awesome fish. They're actually really good table fare. This, is, of course, is a small one, and we are strictly doing catch and release. But if I wasn't, we'd be keeping some of his bigger brothers. Epic fish, man. Oh, so cool. So cool. Perch, red breast, sunfish, fall fish, largemouth, smallmouth. This is productive. And we've only, I haven't even gotten my big motor yet. I've just been on my trolling motor. We launched, came around the corner, made a couple casts. We've already got two. I've got three species just out of the spot. Current time is 10.27. We've got 17 hours left in this challenge. We're gonna see if we can knock off a big boy, that being pike, and then also pickerel. This is a really good bass spot. We already have a large mouth though. Hey man, you want a rod? Yeah, sure man. I got a spinning rod, is that cool? It's literally a dream to like see you in person. That's awesome. I've always dreamt of doing it. So this is Pearson. He paid for our launch fee. We actually ran back to the gas station to get money and. He was sitting there waiting for us, so I'm gonna give him a rod. Thank you, bro. As a thank you, yeah, no, of course, man. Hopefully, you can get some good fish on. That's perfect for what you're throwing there, wacky worms and stuff like that. Oh, okay. Yeah, should be able to get some. I've mean, caught pike on that rod, you know. That's, it'll it'll really? handle it. Yeah, it's a great stick. Hey, man, it was great meeting you. Yeah. Take care, brother. Struck out on the trout this morning, but a nice pike would make it all better. One. Bass. Not the right species. We already have one of you, guy. I love bass, but I don't need bass. 
come here. I don't know if there's largies around. There ought to be some pike. It's a shame we already caught a bass because this would have felt pretty nice. A little bycatch while we're pike fishing. I'm not sure how long we're gonna give this, but uh, not too long because we have to hit the right tide for those stripers. I, don't know, I haven't even seen a follower or gotten a bite other than that one. Not looking good. Oh, what the f is that? It's still on. Yes, yes, yes. What is it? What is it? It's a pike. No, it's a pickerel. It's a nice pickerel. Let's go. New species, baby. I've never been so excited to catch a pickerel before. Usually these fish are something I try to avoid when I'm bass fishing, but in this challenge, we needed them. Very, very common fish in New England. Oh, relax, buddy. They do have teeth, so you gotta watch out for that. There you have it, chain pickerel. These guys are all over New England. They're actually native and uh, are welcomed in the waters, whereas the pike are not freaking everywhere. You can find them in just about all of the uh, lakes up here in Maine. And crazy little dudes, nasty teeth too. They don't get as big as pike they're just as mean <laughs> thank you dude i never said thank you to a pickerel before be free little guy <laughs> let's go another species it was worth it oh my. there we go there we go there we go there we go no 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 oh it was a big one too no it's a big one Oh, why? Why? Look, I cannot believe that. Let's go! We got her! We got her! It's not a big one, but we got her. Woo! Yes! <laughs> I knew it. I knew if we just stuck it out, we'd find one. The last one I had was like, well over 30. It was a good fish for this body water, but we're just after one fish. It doesn't matter the size. And this is a, you know, it's a healthy one. It's a fun size for sure. It is a pike, a non-native fish to Maine, but a lot of anglers enjoy catching them because they're vicious, they're powerful, and they are honestly a lot of fun to catch. Yo, this is the fish we've been after. Pickerel and pike all in one spot. That's so sick, man. Just ate that little bladed jig. When they aren't eating the big baits, it's good to downsize and throw bass gear for them. It just tends to fool them a little bit easier. I don't think we're able to do it, but we did it. So cool. All right, I'm gonna get, a, gonna get him back in the water and then head to our next spot, which is the striper zone. Come here. Oh, yeah, he's just gonna let himself go. What are there, dude? We're crushing, we're right on schedule. Let's head to the river and uh, see if we can get real lucky and catch that elusive striper. Quite a different scenery from what we've fished thus far. This system basically brushes downtown Bangor. We started off in like very rural part of Maine and now we're in the urban setting. But uh, this is a cool system because in the summertime, the striper will come from the Atlantic Ocean. They'll travel 20 miles up the Penobscot River to chase alewives and bait and they get stuck here. They're not here for a very long time, but during the summer months, they, they can be pretty thick. So we're gonna try our best to see if we can crack on one. We have high tide in about an hour and a half. We're probably gonna give it about an hour and a half. First cast going in. Gotta give the spook a lucky kiss. Mwah! All right, go get eaten by a striper. Oh my God. Oh my God. Come on. Oh, he popped it. Oh my God, giant fish. Come on, I'm on baby. Oh, it's a big one. It's a big one too. I'm on, oh baby. Oh, hooked up on a big striper. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Homie crunched it. Holy, come here. Come here, big girl. Oh yeah, nice fish, nice striper. Oh yeah, come here. Holy. Holy, finally, something to pull some drag. Oh, buddy. I gotta not mess this up, it's a good one. Oh, she's barely hooked. She's barely hooked. She's barely hooked. Oh, there she goes. She just woke up. She just woke up. Holy hell. Oh my gosh. She just woke up. Let's go, baby. <laughs> Striper on the Penobscot. So sick, man. 
so sick. Screamer! Oh my lord! Oh. As much as I want to stay and keep chasing these guys, if, if we do land this fish, we gotta go. We gotta chase some more stuff. This happened a lot faster than anticipated. Oh my lord. It's a big fish. Oh, just barely one hook. Let's go, baby! We got it! Striper done and dusted! Woo! Oh, it's a nice one. It's a nice striper. Oh! Out of all the fish, I thought this was gonna be one of the more difficult ones, but this guy said, nope, I'm gonna make your 24 hour multi-species challenge a lot easier on the Penobscot. Oh, it's a good one, man. These guys you gotta be careful with, not because they have teeth, but because they love to death roll and you do not want, <laughs> what? It's spook. What's wrong with it? Oh, it says eat me? <laughs> yeah. Caleb put that on top of the, the spook the other day to mimic how our frogs are, because it says eat me on the frog. Oh yeah, good fish. Check that out. So cool. You can go and chase, you know, brook trout, crappie, pike, only a few moments away from where you can catch these fish. Actually, he's got some sea lice on him. That just means that he came from the ocean not too long ago. These are probably stripers, hands down, one of my favorite fish to catch. And we taked it off like instantly. All it took was five minutes of being out here. Whew, that incoming tide is key. Time for the release. Gotta put up a hell of a fight. We're gonna make sure we revive her. She may not need it, but... Oh, nope, she doesn't need it. <laughs> Woo! Striper, done and dusted. Pike, largemouth, smallmouth, panfish, striper. If we could catch sturgeon and they were legal to chase, we would try to catch a sturgeon, but for now, they're pretty much endangered here in the Penobscot. So cool, dude. I'm gonna take another cast. <laughs> Big swirl on me, still on me. Oh, he just missed it. Come on. Oh my God, that was disgusting. That was gross. Oh, it's a good one too. It's a good fish. Oh, it's a nice one. That was dirty. That was dirty. Oh. I just had to get a bit of a taste of this. This is our last day fishing in Maine. We probably should be on to the next pond, but they're here. It's like, oh my God, can you, is it even allowed to leave biting striper? I don't think it is. God, he ate it like right by the boat too. Just trucked it. This one's not fighting as hard as the last one. Not as big. In the boat. <laughs> That's so, fr this makes up for our failed trout mission this morning. That is for sure. I may not know how to catch trout, but I can catch a couple stripey boys. Beautiful striped bass. Maine has it all, dude. Saltwater, freshwater, everything in between. It's so cool, we're just gonna slide it right back. See you, Bubba. <laughs> dude, this is so much fun to think that we're about to go crappie fishing after this. It doesn't seem right. <laughs> well, I've been up for over 12 hours. Uh, it's starting to kind of wear at me, especially knowing that for our last difficult fish species, we're gonna have to do some driving, put some miles down. But check this out, we came prepared. I brought this uh, this little Dometic cooler and uh, it's actually not cool, it's a fridge. It gets down to negative six degrees if you want it to. And we've got some snacks in here too. Um, I packed my lunch, I'm just gonna have like a wrap. And then, yep, Caleb, here's your lunch. There we go, bud. Thank Just you. how you like it. Awesome. It's, uh, two Red Hots, uncooked, and a bag of mustard. So, anyway, no, all jokes, <laughs> all jokes aside, we're gonna get refueled. We've been at it literally all day. Haven't stopped fishing. We're on species number nine. We're on species number nine, potentially nine and 10. The goal here is to catch a black crappie. Not a native fish to Maine, but they should be in this pond. If we get really lucky, we might catch a brook trout. There are brookies in here, but I highly doubt it. So after this though, it comes the turning point. Do we go up north and chase a muskie and maybe potentially get lucky and try to catch some trout species? Or do we send it like down closer to the coast where there's a lot of trouty spots where we could potentially catch a brown or a brookie or a rainbow? I don't really know. Let's just see what we can do here. Maybe knock a couple more species off our list and then come back to the ramp and regroup and really think of what our best option is because the muskie spot's three hours away. The trout spot's are probably about two and a half. So 
I don't know. I'm racking my brain. First things first, let's get ourselves a black yappy. This is some Texas type stuff. Oh, 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 oh my god. Oh, I just had him. There we go. I'm on. Let's go! Black crappie, baby! <laughs> we did it! Wow, these past two stops have been wicked productive. Pull up on the spot, catch the fish. Freaking awesome. We're catching a lot of small fish today, but this is just, the reason I want to film this video is to show you guys there is a lot of game fish to be caught in Maine. Not all welcome, not all native, but crappie are awesome. People love crappie. They're good eating, they're fun to catch, and they're absolutely beautiful. I found like a freaking lay down out there. This is like some Texas type stuff, and it's just loaded full of like hundreds of crappie. This in particular is a black crappie. So cool, man. Thank you, little dude. Back down she goes. Species number nine. Yeah, right, nine. <laughs> That's ridiculous. That is absurd. Oh, no way, let's go, new species. Oh my God, it's a pumpkin seed. No way, dude. Did we just, did we got our 10th species. No freaking way. That right there is a pumpkin seed. I didn't think we'd catch one of these. Nice little bycatch. I'm glad I stayed on this school. I, I was just kind of having fun seeing how many crappie we can catch. And this little guy, panfish number two, decided to show up. These are some of the most beautiful species of bluegill you can catch out there. Look at their gill plates. So amazing. Back down you go, bud. Let's go, baby. Look at that school crappie too. Watch this. Pan to the right. Those are all little panfish and crappie. It might be worth taking another cast down there. We still need the white perch. I'm not sure. There could be one down there. They all look like panfish to me, but it's still worth a shot. I mean, they're fired up fish. That's just like, a, that is a football field size of panfish. It's nuts. Are we gonna do this? Is this happening? No. You're supposed to go like this. Oh my gosh. Well, back in the car. That was better than expected. Two species, crappie and a pumpkin seed, black crappie to be specific because there's two different types. I don't know if this is a smart choice, but I've been here before and I've caught two fish that we need to catch for this challenge. That being a brook trout and a splake. Uh, splake is a cross between a brook trout and a lake trout. Uh, oh, we're doing a bit of off-roading. Very nice. So they're in here as well. I, I don't believe they can reproduce. So the only way that you can find them in lakes up here in Maine is through stocking programs that Maine DNR provides for you know recreational use. There is salmon in here too. I doubt we'll cross paths with one, with one of those. And we have a fairly easy fish that we can cross off, that being the white perch. A white perch is basically just a white bass without stripes. They're wicked good fun to catch and amazing eating. The spot's cool though. You have to go through some wooded roads and once you get to the wooded roads you end up at a piece of dirt which is your ramp <laughs> this is a primarily hand launch only but the lawn makes it work well what i'm doing right now is i'm looking for fish i've been here before but it was during the fall when a lot of the trout were moving up shallow the water temps were cool you know i don't even need a trout just something that'll eat a spoon Anyway, this is the program, search and destroy. We just need one of the three fish species that are in here that I need, like I need to target. And there's some big smallmouth in here and it's taking every ounce of energy not to catch one. No way, no way, what do I have? What do I have? What do I have? I've got something. Something's on here. It's a white perch, baby. Let's go. No way. I'm over here fishing for trout like an idiot. Like I'm fishing for trout like a bass thing. I don't know what I'm doing. So the only only way I know how to catch trout is to slow troll. So what I did is I just put a spoon over the side of my boat. And as I'm casting for, I guess, anything at this point, um, this little white perch came up and crushed my spoon this is not a good example of white perch but this is a multi-species challenge and it counts i've actually never seen one this tiny they look pretty cool it's like a little mini striped bass 
They're totally native to Maine and you can find them all throughout New England and they get very big. I've caught some up to like three pounds and they fight very hard. I'm gonna have to get the telephoto lens for this guy. <laughs> Let's go, dude, no way. Oh geez, I could probably use him as bait. Come here, buddy. Ah. <laughs> Caleb's like, rod. And I heard like, clink, 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 clink. <laughs> Let's go, dude. Hey, coming to this lake was not completely worthless. We've caught a species in every single spot we went to today. They've not been the biggest fish. It's not been the, the easiest of adventures, but uh, it's all worked out. That's species number 11. Let's go. Well, this is not where I was hoping to pick up the video. We decided to come back to camp for a bit because weather has taken a turn for the worse. I think I might have said this in the beginning of this 24 hour challenge and that is I probably should have taken up meteorology and um, just thrown the whole YouTube passion out the window because this is an easy job. We originally had the opportunity to plan this trip yesterday which was supposed to be today's weather and uh, it flip flopped on us. So we've got some pretty nasty rains. It's getting down to the low 40s. I'm all for roughing it, I don't care. But what does care is this camera, which is really hard to find nowadays. And it's a nice piece of equipment. Without this camera, there's no, you know, videos. So we're gonna wait this out for a little bit. Um, this is not us being pansies, trust me. I'm wide awake, I can keep going. But I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna wait for this rain to stop for us to have a bit of a window to catch Three fish that I'm honestly not too optimistic about. Let me just kind of break down where we're at right now in this challenge. By the way, how are you feeling? This is this is the man behind the lens. He is just- Don't ask me. He's been grinding all day. We're having steak, leftover steak, chicken tortilla soup, and um, a little bit of chilled down dime. Like I said, we're getting the boat charged up. She's low on battery. Uh, we're gonna wait for this heavy rain to pass. And we're gonna wake up bright and breezy. Gonna grab some bait get some rods rigged up and see if we can end this 24 hour series on a bang. Wish us luck. This is it, the last few hours of our 24 hour multi-species challenge. That was rough. We sat and waited for the rain to pass, it's finally for the most part let up. It's like drizzling just ever so slightly. But while the rain has stopped, we now have super cold conditions to deal with, especially cold conditions considering it is almost July. It's 40 degrees right now. I, I, don't, I don't know, it's almost as if Mother Nature heard we were doing a 24 hour challenge and threw absolutely everything she had at us. Rain, wind, overcast, cold weather, it's just been rough. Before we had to like, we're gonna grab some bait. I think we're definitely gonna need some bait before we get out there and uh, show for the best, we'll see. Of course. Didn't even go off. That was anticlimactic. I would say that this uh, this was a failure. We did not make it happen. We uh, we tried, well, kind of, in a way. Uh, as you guys know, we got back here super late from driving to that splake spot where we only caught a white perch. Got here, seemed pretty optimistic. I was hoping the rain was gonna just pass us. I stayed up for quite a bit, like poking my head out the window, listening to the barn, making sure it wasn't dumping. Of course, it dumped pretty much all the way till like 2.30 a.m. That's when we rolled out of bed, hooked the boat up. I walked outside and I'm like, oh my God, this is the literally worst day that we've been up here. Blowing like 15, it's 40 something degrees and it's gonna rain. So I was like, you know what, screw it, this is for a challenge. In my head I'm thinking, of course, I'm too tired to even talk right now. Hooked the boat up, head on down the road. We drive like 15 minutes out of the way just to get bait at one of my spots where it's open 24 hours, pull up to that spot, bait store's close. I'm like, okay, that was pretty much our last ditch ever. Loop back around, we're heading to the lake, the sun's starting to come up, like we're losing time here. And halfway from where we were at to the lake, I looked at Caleb and I'm like, dude, let's just call it. Let's just take the L. We, we could not make it happen. We couldn't make, 
what is probably the more easier fish to catch up here in Maine, that being trout and salmon, couldn't make it happen. While we caught 11 inland Maine fish species today, we didn't fully succeed in my book. We didn't, I was, you know, I was hoping that timer was gonna go off while we were on the water, feel a little more triumphant, gave it that attempt. But I was like, dude, we have a flight to catch today. I'm goose, the weather's terrible. We don't have bait. Everything's kicking us in the shin right now. So anyway, I just want let you guys know, this is an L, in my opinion. We did good, but we didn't complete the challenge, fully go through with it, and end on the drink. I just didn't think it was worth it. We, we, we would be miserable. If you guys wanna see another attempt at this, maybe we'll do another one in spring when it's a little bit more fishy for some of those cold water species, or we can go to another state and do it somewhere like Florida, California, Texas. I don't know, you guys have to drop a comment, let me know where we should film one of these next. It was fun. I mean, I, I definitely need to get used to it, but it was a good time. Anyway, we're peacing out, signing out. Thank you all for watching today's video. As always, folks, literally keep fishing. Never stop, unless you're out of bait and it's really cold. Peace.